Um, Coppin is certainly a team that plays um, somewhat of a unique defensive style that has been hard for people to attack this year, including us. Uh, they went to Loyola Chicago, the Final Four team from a few years ago, and they won. Uh, they went to James Madison and they won. So they've got a really talented group and they shoot the ball from three very well. And so they just caused all kinds of problems for us. Uh, great job for our guys to stay with it and find a way to win the game. Coach, how are you? Congratulations on the victory. Uh, first and foremost, there was no late start today. Did you feel that that was one of the deficiencies that the team needed to address? Yeah, so Tyrone had a lot to do with it. So Tyrone came out firing, and uh, so really happy for him. Uh, this is his sophomore year. He's had good games, uh, but he really got us going early, and I, I think he deserves a lot of the credit. Coach, oh, uh, coach, sorry about that. <laughs> coach, Kamar McKnight came in averaging 16 points a game, and it really feels like your team has done a great job of neutralizing your opponent's best score. What were your words of encouragement or your advice in attacking Kamar McKnight and making his night as difficult as it was? Yeah, so McKnight is a really tough player because the other guys on the court are such good three-point shooters, it just gives them a lot of space. A lot of times we do have Air 10 Ghazi on the other team's best player, and so that is to our advantage. Uh, guys, he's a great defender. Uh, but Knight is so good because he not only shoots threes, but he's in attack mode as well. Um, so really talented play. They turned it over 17 times. What did you think overall your team did so well defensively approach-wise? Yeah, so we played man-to-man -man the first half, and we held them in the 20s. So you know, part of it was simply our energy to guard the ball. In the second half, we had a tougher time guarding one-on-one. -on -one. So they beat us off the dribble one-on-one -on -one in the second half. In the first half, uh, that was the key to our defense as we guarded the ball. Coach, could you talk about the, uh, the difficulty some of the size matchups may have caused, especially the matchup between McKnight and Cologne? Yeah, so they have bigger guards. They have bigger players. And, uh, for example, in their last game, they started the game by posting up the point guard on the other mm -hmm. team. Obviously, having a seven-footer really adds a lot to their dynamic. And they really take advantage of their personnel. So they've got bigger players, and they really just funnel the ball to the seven-footer, and it's hard to attack. Coach, you've gone 6-6 six and six in this non-conference portion of your schedule. Now a big start to A-10 conference play with a date against BCU on Thursday. Given what's happened in this non-conference stretch, what can you take from that and bring over to A-10 conference play where you guys want to get some respect and get out from the bottom of the conference? Yeah, so it's an interesting time right now simply because, you know, you, you've played, we've played double-figure games. We've played 12 games. And so... It's a time where you want to be in a great rhythm. Uh, right now, we're still trying to figure out ourselves a little bit because we've had changes. Uh, for example, Antoine didn't play tonight. Uh, Joel wasn't available. You know, we'll get him back quickly. But uh, we're still trying to figure out the rotation, and that's not only hard for for me. It's hard for the guys. You know, they don't know exactly what's coming next, and so we need to get in a little bit of a rhythm um, with some consistency of play and also with our health. Have you found that it's a good morale boost for a team, though, to, to get a win in the final game before conference play and bridge that gap? Yeah, you do see a lot of teams around the country scheduling. Um, I'm not talking about us, but you see other teams from power conferences scheduling in a way they want their guys feeling good going into the conference. Um, so it's always good to get a win. I mean, I, I think young people especially um, handle winning or recover from winning a lot better or a lot quicker than they do recover from losing. Coach, obviously you address the physical components needed as Florida moves towards the A-10, but what's the, what's the mindset psychologically? How's, the, how's Florida doing uh, approaching the A-10? Well, you know, I, I think the, the best thing to do is simply focus on the present moment. And what I mean by that is Onye Aisi really saved the day for our team today. So. You know, we can look at Oni and see his basket protection, block shots, and his rebounding down the stretch. He went to the free throw and made free, three free throws. So from Oni's perspective, he should feel really good. Uh, Jalen Cobb went to the free throw and made 11 free throws. He should feel really good about what he did for his team. Obviously, Tyrone got us off to a great start. So each of those individuals 
based on what just happened tonight, they feel really good about their performance. There are other guys on the roster that are hoping to help the team more, and um, so we're all in different spots, I think. Coach, real quickly, what is the status on Antoine Port Lee? Will he be available for the first game of A-10 conference play against BCU? Uh, he has a leg injury at this point.